The article I want to talk about right now is called Macroscopic Anomalies Before the September 2010 Magnitude 7.1 Earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand. It was published by Whitehead and Ulusoy in Natural Hazards and Earth System Sciences in 2013. In Figure 1, you can see the location of two earthquakes marked by asterisks. The first earthquake is Darfield, September 4th, 2010, and the second earthquake is the Christchurch, February 22nd, 2011 earthquake. The earthquake of discussion here is the 2010 earthquake that occurred in Darfield. It was a 7.1 magnitude earthquake. It occurred at 4.35 in the morning. And it's about 40 kilometers northwest of Christ's church, which is about 25 miles. Figure 2 shows various unusual phenomena retrospectively reported through letter, fax, and email by citizens. And this is before three different earthquakes. And each pyograph represents a different earthquake. And the proportion is the proportion of type of precursor reported. The first pie graph is Izmit, Turkey, which was an earthquake that occurred in 1999. The next is Kobe, Japan, which was an earthquake in 1995. And the last is the Christchurch earthquake in 2010. Before I go into details describing each category, I'm just going to generally talk about what was found. In all three locations, animal behavior was over 50% of the reports, and that's the green category. Meteorological was next in purple, and it was around 30% in Turkey and Japan and 10% in New Zealand. The next is land and sea, which was the blue category, about 10% in all. This is followed by electrical appliances, which is the turquoise. And that was less than 10% in all, from 6 to 10%. And plants were rarely reported. That was in red, and only in Turkey and Japan. And in Christchurch, there was actually an other category, which was 17%. And it consisted of human symptoms as a precursor. So overall, we can see that there were similar proportions of reports across these earthquakes. The animal precursors primarily occurred right before the earthquake, and those included reports of farm animal behaviors, birds, and also pet precursors. Um, an interesting report was of worms. There were three reports in Christchurch of worms in excess, earthworms, that were seen before the earthquake. And Two of them were on opposite sides of Christ's church, and one of them was in a garden. It's also notable that this was not due to flooding in any way because the weather was dry. In terms of meteorological precursors, there were several reported. Um, there was a strange halo arc of light reported over Christ's church that was blue. There were several reports that the stars looked unusually close, which was also independently reported from Turkey and Japan as well. In terms of the land and sea, there were creaking and explosions recorded in the ground. There was unusual silting of streams. Electrical precursors were reported. Many people reported lost television signals and other television problems. There were watch, watches reported not working properly, and more. In terms of the other category with humans, this was only reported in Christ Church, and it was very interesting. Uh, and I will quote from what was given in the article. This woman says, I have been hearing deep pulsing buzzing noises when it's quiet at night. A bit like a helicopter or airplane a long, long way away. It is so deep I can almost feel rather than hear it. 
I have turned everything electrical off in the house and could still hear it. The rest of my family cannot hear it. When I go outside, I cannot hear it. It stops and starts and often wakes me up at night suddenly. I thought it was tetanitis in the ears, so I had my ears checked, who said my hearing is very good and that maybe I could just hear things other people cannot. A week or so ago, I was talking to my neighbor and mentioned a noise, and she said she's been hearing it too. So has several other of her woman friends. And their families also think they are imagining it. But since the earthquake, it has almost stopped, although I do hear it sometimes. I wonder if it is something to do with the earthquake, although it was over several months rather than just before it. In terms of human symptoms, there were also reports of unusual feelings of pressure and headaches. And there were also reports of unusual itchiness. In figure 3, you can see animal precursor reports each hour before the earthquake in New Zealand. And on the x-axis are the hours, and 14 hours before is all the way on the right side. And you can see two-hour intervals. And the number of animal reports per hour is on the y-axis, and it goes all the way up to 90 in intervals of 10. And I'm not going to talk in detail about this chart, but I wanted you to see it. You can see, though, that it does peak about a half hour before the earthquake. Figure 4 shows lost pet data for Christ's church with ionospheric data superimposed on it. And the ionospheric data are those two red rectangles. And I'm not going to talk in detail about the ionospheric data, but I will say that it's a French Demeter satellite, and it's been used in many instances to look at precursor earthquake data. And the two red rectangles here are anomalies that were recorded before this Christchurch earthquake. In this figure, you can see on the x-axis are the days before the earthquake. You see on the left one, and on the right it goes all the way up to 33. And on the y-axis, you can see the pets lost, as reported by data from the press, which is a newspaper there. Also note here that there is a combined Saturday-Sunday edition, so every seventh day should lack a data point completely. Then the data point after that, the Monday report, you'd have an expectation that the results might be doubled. Well, here you can see that Right around the time of these ionospheric anomalies, there are huge spikes in these reports of lost pets. And you can see also that they are not preceded by a Saturday or Sunday edition. So that's an important note to make here. Without going into too much detail in this figure as well, I will say that the number of pets lost right before the earthquake was statistically significant as well as in the week preceding the earthquake, there were double the number of reports of pets that were lost. And this is an effect that has been seen in other earthquakes. For example, in 1989, magnitude 7.1 California. According to O'Reilly 2006 research report, there were an unprecedented amount of pets reported lost before this earthquake. However, this has not been replicated in all earthquakes by any means, and it was not the case again for the next earthquake that occurred in Christ Church in 2011. Very briefly, Table 1 shows that statistically there were more precursors reported within 24 hours of the earthquake across these categories than there were two to four days before. Very briefly, Table 2 shows that there were statistically more precursors reported inside of a 56-kilometer range of that earthquake zone than outside of that range. In general, we are observing precursors that are occurring before earthquakes that fall into a whole variety of categories, most of which are scientifically verified 
categories in terms of earthquake precursors. But the most important thing here is that we can use earthquake precursors to help predict earthquakes, particularly when all different forms of precursors are taken together, because this provides the most robust predictor for an earthquake. We should be recording these precursors, and when a certain number of these precursors reach a threshold, we should have some sort of warning system, an orange light or red light, at point at which people really need to be on guard. And I really don't know why this has not occurred yet.